If you're looking to build a real-time application, we're going to do that right now. In this video, in just 10 to 20 minutes, we're going to put together a micro instance of a real-time chat application using just plain JavaScript and Comet Chat. Let's get started right now. We will begin on VS Code. Here, we're going to create two files. The very first is index.html, and the second will be the index.js for the JavaScript. Now we want HTML block here of all the content that we're going to have on the page. This can be auto completed by VS Code. In here, I'm going to put in the title as an instant chat application using comma chat, which will be live. We don't have much to work with here. Right now, the body is empty and we haven't even imported the script. So let's actually jump on the comma chat website and import the latest version of comma chat that can be used with JavaScript. With that done, we just need to import one more thing, which is the index.js file we just created earlier. Later, we'll add in some functionality into here, but for the time being, let's keep this nice and simple. Now, with these things done, we can begin to build out our application. Now, for a chat application, we need three main things. We need to be able to log in, we need to be able to send messages, and we need to see those messages. So let's begin. I'll start by copying the comma chat initialization from the settings page. This comes with an app ID and a region ID, which we need to fill out. The rest is pretty self-explanatory and can be found in earlier videos. So in order to get the app ID, we're going to have to bring up the website of Comet Chat and log into the dashboard. So I've already done this, and this is my current application. Here, when you select it, you're going to immediately get your application ID as well as your region. So I'm going to copy paste those attributes across. With that done, we've initialized comma chat inside of our application, which is connected to our index.js file, and it's up and ready to go. Now we just need to begin our process here. And the very first step that I want to do is to get users to be able to log in. Now we're not going to build out an entire login system. We're going to keep it very simple. I'm thinking something like just selecting what username you have and then selecting to log in. That will require us to have two inputs here. The very first input will be to select the username itself. So here I'll create an input with the type of text and the name of user with an ID I think of user as well. Then we'll create one more input, which will be to submit a login and it'll be a submit input. With these things done, we can now proceed to creating a script to perform the function of a login for comment chat. So our users can begin to start using this system. Now I'm going to write all of this in line right now inside of the HTML file and later I'll move this across into our index file. This just makes it easier to see exactly what's going on. Here is the authentication code needed to create a user inside of comment chat. We're going to simplify this down to its bare essentials. Here we'll pass in the auth key inside of the dashboard that we had earlier in the app. And we're going to create a user ID and a name which will be the same and it'll be based on the input that we've created just above. Now, in order to pull this value across, I am going to need to pull it from that input. So I'm going to put this all inside of a function. And this function I'm going to call create user. I'll paste this code in and in here, I'm going to pass in the username. I want this to populate the username of the UID and the name. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to pull that out. So normally what we would do is create a form and have these inputs sit inside of that. This form would then be submitted when we pull in a request to log in and it would send some information to the backend. But I want all of this to happen in real time. And instead of doing an on submit with create user and passing in this value and then pulling that out, I'm thinking we can do it a different way. We'll get rid of the form and we'll simply pull it out of the document element ID. And in this element ID, I've got the username, which has a value. Now, this of course isn't the most secure way of doing things, but I'm just doing this as a test to showcase how we can create an instant chat application. We're going to give this a shot. Let's actually open this page up using live server inside of VS Code, which will simply open up the page. We've got our enter username here and we can put in a example such as jobs and we can see that the username jobs was created as well as all the information that goes along with it. Now here, I'm also going to log the user in when we create them. You'll see the piece of code here where I'm passing the UID and the auth code to do this, but we don't need to check whether a user exists or not since we've already created them. So it's a kind of no brainer to just delete some of this code and plug the login straight after we create the user. So let's do that now. There is one syntax error, which I think I'm missing here after the bracket. 
Uh, let's jump back into the code and make sure we're closing that off properly. And now we should be able to jump back into Chrome and make sure there's no errors popping up and give that a test. Here I'm gonna create a user called Happy. We'll just wait half a second and we can see that the user has been created and the login of that user has been accomplished as well with the oath token and data just over here. Perfect. So now we've got a basic application which is creating a user and logging them in once we add in this prompt. I'm going to wrap this in its own little div. I might call this something like login prompt and normally this could be like an entire login system, but I'm gonna keep this nice and simple and I think this should just do. Now, after a user logs in, you'll want to hide the login prompt. Normally this could be achieved easily in React, but in terms of plain vanilla JavaScript, I'm gonna do a change here to the styling, making the display of this box to none. This means that after we add in a username, such as one more test and click login, that should successfully disappear after the user's logged in and later we can show a prompt showing logged in user with maybe a logout button. This covers most of the first part of this video, which is to create and log in a user. Now that we have this completed, we can actually move on to the part where we actually provide a chat interface. We're gonna create a new div here called the chat window. And here is where we're gonna start making sure that people can communicate back and forth. Now, as part of this, it's currently invisible. I'm actually gonna style it to make sure that the display is currently set to none. And instead, we're gonna set it to visible or block once a person has logged in. This way, it looks like it's a real-time application without any page reloads. Now we're gonna delete the code in here that we previously had, and I'm thinking to start off with something simple such as showing the username of the current user that has logged in. Normally, if we're using something like React, we could just plug in some state here, but with JavaScript, we're going to create an ID here with a span, and it'll start off in a pending state. So when we perform a login, we get this JavaScript object, well, this JSON back. This is the user object. And this here actually has a name. So I'm gonna pull that out and I'm gonna utilize that and have the actual element of the spam basically populate that username. Now I'm also using GitHub Copilot here, which means that I can simply pass in the comments of what I want here to happen, which is to set the element your username with the inner HTML text of the user object. And it's gonna give me the code for that, which is the document.get element by ID, your username, and then to set the inner HTML text to be that user object. And the only thing I'm missing is to update the get element ID here to the chat window and we can test this out in Chrome. So here I'm gonna type in a user working example and you can see it's logged in and it's displayed this user working basically with the label attached properly. So great, we have a login request performing quite well. Let's actually plug this code into our JS file. I like to keep the main HTML nice and clean and this is the whole purpose of having an index.js. With this done, we can now add another button here. I'm thinking maybe a logout button and this will allow users to maybe clear the session and its data so that they can maybe log in as someone else. Now for the logout, I think this is one of the easier ones. Let's create a function here called logout and I'm gonna paste in some basic code here to perform a logout function. This is just calling comma chat.logout and this will allow us to then log out the current session that we've done. But we need to also update the state of the UI here. So what I'm gonna do is make the elements reverse in terms of which one is visible and which one is hidden where the login prompt becomes visible once more and the chat window disappears. Now let's test this all out. We're gonna do a test here and we are gonna log in as the user test. We can now see the user test name there and we can log out and that's successfully been completed. Now we have a basic login and log out. Well, without any security, but let's not worry too much about that. We do have this one issue that if we try to use the same username, it's gonna come up with an error. This is because the current code set up in such a way as to only perform the login request after a user has been created. If, for example, the user already exists, as this error shows that is being thrown, then it's not gonna log us in. So in this case, since we're just doing this as a test, 
if the user already does exist, I'm still going to perform a login request. This is where I'm going to check the code to make sure that is the code that we're utilizing. I'm just going to place it here below our create user script. Now, I'm sure there is a much better way to do this, and I'm not going to tell you how you should do it in your own application. This is just to give you an idea of how you do problem solving as well as how you can play around with the system so that you can get it to work in different ways. But in this case here, I just want to keep it nice and simple. And we can see that has actually worked. So good news, we can now move on to the next part of this video, which is to start creating the chat interface as well as sending and receiving messages. Let's start by creating a message listener. This is the core aspect of Comet Chat, where you'll be able to listen for messages coming in and out of the system. Now for a message listener, it's quite easy. We just call commentchat.addMessageListener. There are a few methods that are happening here, which we'll be looking at shortly to have a look at how we can update our UI. But the other part of adding a message listener is removing it. So when you perform a login, you'll connect to the message listener. But when you perform a logout, you'll probably want to disconnect that message listener by calling commentchat.removeMessageListener. With these things done, we can now move on to finishing up these sections. Now, one thing that I've actually noticed is that we've got a little bit of code duplication here. Whenever you see your code being replicated like this, it's often better to create an individual function where you have one instance of that code. So here for the actual login, I'm going to create its own function called log user in, and we're going to cut and paste the main code that we're reusing here to this section here below. This allows us to simply call the function passing in the variables that we need to be able to establish this to work. The next thing that I'll do here is to attach the creation of the message listener to the event where we have logged the user in. This will be simple as adding in the function at the very bottom of that line. We'll do the same for when we perform a logout. So we'll scroll up to the logout function and just apply that to basically stop the message listener once a user has logged out. With all these things now done, we need to create an interface for our chat systems. So what I'm thinking is that we need, first of all, somewhere where a person can enter a message, such as this input I've created to basically enter messages, and somewhere where people can submit those messages. So I'm just going to reuse this with an onclick handler with a function called send message. Now this is pretty standard. It would be worthwhile now to create a better ID so that everything looks nice and consistent. I'm going to update the value here to be called send message because I like to have it the same as my function name, but the value itself, I'm just going to simplify that down just to send. Now, one final thing here that I forgot to do is passing the additional auth key and UID as part of the login user. So let me quickly fill those out over here. And we're going to do this both for when we log in a user when we've created that user as well as if that user has already been created. Let's test this out to see what it looks like. I'm going to log in here as test user. I'm going to be prompted to my login window here. Where we've got a logout button as well as our little enter message with a send button. Now this isn't really linked to anything just yet, so we're not going to see anything. But we also don't have a message input where we're storing and showcasing all our messages too. So it'd be worthwhile putting this in its own nested div where we can start applying and showcasing all of that. So I'll wrap this in its own div so that it breaks the line from above. I'll give this a little bit of styling so it actually looks like a chat interface. And I'll do this by adding some inline styling here of just a border of one pixel in CCC, which is just a gray color. So let's refresh this and have a look. I think we might just need one more thing though. That is an actual place to put all our messages. I'm going to create a ID here of messages. And I think I might even do another styling here of a border radius to showcase this as the chat box, which we'll be using and presenting all our messages in. I think maybe we can style it a little bit more with maybe some padding or margin, maybe even a minimum height. And with all that, we can have the messages appear in this div box. Great. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's actually have a look at what that looks like. Let's do a test, a login. And here we've got our logout, we've got our message, and we've got our chat box, which still needs that minimum height. So let me just place that in here. Maybe something like 100 pixels might be good to start off with. And that can increase as more messages pop up. 
So with that done, we now need a function to send the messages. I covered this in an earlier video, so I'm just going to paste in the code here from comma chat, where we define a receiver ID, as well as a text message and a couple of other things. Now we're going to do a group message here to a group chat called global. And here I'm going to have the message as just MSG, and we'll be able to pull this out from the text box later. Otherwise, everything else can remain more or less the same. Okay, so we can now send a message and we need to process that message inside of our message listener. When we receive an on text message, then we get a variable here called text message, which we want to utilize to update the state of the UI. Now the state of our UI is currently inside of a div called messages. So what we're going to do is basically look that up using JavaScript using get element by ID. Then we're going to update the inner HTML, adding to it the messages sender as well as the messages text. I think that should be good. Now we just need to make sure we're pulling that proper message out. I can do this by grabbing the message from the get element ID messages input that we previously had or message input anyway, and grabbing the value. Now we are still needing to make the group here global as well as add the user to the group. Because if we test this out right now, we'll see that the message prompt shows up that that group doesn't even exist yet, nor are there any group users in there. So what I'm going to do is just jump into the comma chat dashboard and create a group here called global. And we're just going to set this as a public group. Then whenever we log in, whether we have created a brand new user, or if we have an existing user, we're going to make sure that that user is inside of that group. And that is everything. Now we can open up two browsers, and we're going to try and log in as two different people and see if we can send messages back and forth. I'm going to open up my regular Chrome browser here, as well as one in incognito. And we're going to log in as two separate people. And we're going to see if they can communicate back and forth. I've got test on the left and John here on the right hand side. And let's send a message back and forth. Test will send a message saying hello, which pops up and John can reply and say hi test. Now both of these are working, but there is a small issue because all the messages aren't showing up. We can fix this as well. It was just a small typo here where I had text message rather than message popping up when we send a message and updating the inner HTML. So now let's try this one more time. I'll log in here as Adrian and on the other interface as Ben. With these two interfaces, I should be able to send messages back and forth. You can see both of them are updating in real time. And on top of that, we should be able to log a user out such as Ben and we can log in a completely different user. And so this worked out quite well. In just about 100 lines of code, we've got a real time chat application that you could utilize. Of course, there's so many different things that you could do with this kind of interface for your own website. But this is just an example. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Next week, we're going to take a look at groups inside of Comet Chat. If you're looking for that video, you should be able to find that just up here. Awesome.